Ever wondered why some YouTube videos feel like May movies complete with snippets from your favorite films and TV shows? Well, today we're diving into the magic of it all. Have you ever thought about the sheer impact visuals from movies and TV can have on your YouTube content? The truth is, they can take your audience engagement to a whole new level. But, and here's the twist, there's a catch, copyright claims. How do you legally use these clips without stepping on copyright toes? Stick around because we're about to unravel the secrets of fair use on YouTube and give you the keys to navigate this tricky terrain. Navigating Fair Use on YouTube Alright, picture this, you're in the YouTube realm, weaving your content magic and suddenly, the idea of tossing in some epic movie clips or TV snippets strikes you. It's like adding a sprinkle of movie magic to your own creation. But hold on, before you hit that upload button, there's a gatekeeper, the copyright monster. Don't worry though, we're here to decode the secret language of Fair Use, a superhero cape for content creators. So Fair Use is not just a YouTube buzzword, it's a superhero with four key superpowers. First up, transformative use. Imagine your video as a remix, not a replay. You can't just loop a favorite cartoon episode and call it a day. That's like swiping someone else's fries without even sharing your nuggets. Fair Use wants transformation, a remix that turns the original into something new, your own flavor added. Now, let's talk about quantity. It's like portion control for copyrighted material. If you're thinking of using the whole movie, hold your horses. Fair Use is more of a small bites, big impact advocate. Grab a few clips, not the entire cinematic feast. It's like trying a sample, not rating the entire dessert buffet. Time for the impact on commercial success checkpoint. Fair use gets a bit sensitive here. If your video somehow messes with the marketability of the original work, fair use might take a coffee break. But if your creation isn't raining on the parade, fair use is waving you in. It's like throwing a party that doesn't steal the spotlight from the original shindig. Last stop on our fair use map, nature of the copyrighted work. If it's already out there in the world, published and factual, fair use is more likely to give you a high five. Educational content? That's like a fair use VIP pass. Facts, people, facts. The secret handshake with fair use. Now I know legal jargon sounds scarier than a horror movie marathon, but think of these fair use points as your cheat codes. They're your guide to navigating the copyright labyrinth. Handling copyright claims on YouTube. Alright, so you've weaved your content masterpiece, sprinkled in those movie clips like confetti. And then, out of the blue, a copyright claim shows up, the unexpected party crasher. Now, don't go hitting the panic button just yet, we've got a game plan for you. First off, let's address the elephant in the room, common YouTuber complaints. It's like a collective sigh among content creators, the YouTube copyright system, it seems, has its quirks. Companies claim copyright left and right even when your use falls under fair use. Why? Because they're not really sitting down with a bowl of popcorn to watch every YouTube video. Now enter the superhero of the day, the appeal process. When that claim lands on your video, you got the right to appeal. It's like saying, hold up, let's talk about this. You assert that your use falls under fair use guidelines. But here's the catch. Many times, companies reject appeals like unsolicited diet advice. Why? Well, most of them don't really bother watching the video. Now enters the golden nugget most creators miss, the overlooked final stage. After that first appeal rejection, it's not game over. You can try again. If the claim isn't upheld, your video can dance its way back onto YouTube. It's like getting a second chance at the party. Sure, companies might threaten legal action, but truth be told, it's like bringing a bazooka to a water balloon fight. Highly unlikely, especially if your use is fair and square. I get it. The idea of appealing sounds like diving into a legal labyrinth. But hey, take a breath. Understanding fair use principles is your knight in shining armor here. It's not just about the legalities, it's about understanding the dance of fair use and having the confidence to twirl through it. So here's the pep talk, don't let fear or the lack of awareness stop you from hitting that appeal button. It's your right, your chance to say, hey, my content is fair use, let it breathe. And guess what? If you're in the clear, there's no logical reason for a production company to escalate things to court. Alternatives to copyrighted material. Now let's say you've had your fair share of copyright jousts, or maybe you're just feeling extra cautious. Fear not, my creative comrades, there are alternatives that won't have you tiptoeing around the copyright minefield. First on the list, contacting copyright holders for permission. It's like knocking on the door before entering someone's house. Reach out to the copyright owners, shoot them a friendly message, and ask for permission to use their material. Sure, it might not work every time, some doors won't open, but for those that do, it's like having a golden ticket to content wonderland. Next up, utilizing stock footage. Think of it as your content pantry stocked with ingredients that won't trigger copyright alarms. Free stock footage from platforms like Pexels and Pixabay. It's like having a free pass to a buffet without worrying about copyright bouncers. Want to step it up a notch? 
There's paid stock footage, a bit fancier but equally safe. The ethical dimension. How does this make you look? Now let's shift our focus from the legal dance to the ethical waltz of content creation. Imagine this. Your video is out there featuring snippets from others' work. The key question here is not just about legality but also about how it makes you and others look. Enter the how does this make you look factor. It's like having a moral compass guiding you through the ethical landscape. Picture waking up to see your content on someone else's channel. How would that make you feel? If it's positive, showcasing your expertise, sharing your wisdom, it's like a virtual high five. Your content becomes a platform for others to learn from you. Now let's flip the script. What if your content is used to tear down, shame, or negatively portray someone? Intent matters here. If the goal is to uplift and educate its ethical brilliance. But if it's to shame and embarrass, well, that's like using your powers for the dark side. The message is clear. The impact of using copyrighted material goes beyond the legal realm. It's about being mindful of how your content reflects on individuals and entities. Think of it as creating a virtual gallery. What kind of art are you showcasing? And how does it contribute to the online space? And there you have it, fellow creators. We've journeyed through the realm of fair use, danced with copyright claims, explored alternatives, and even delved into the ethical dimensions of content creation. It's not just about making videos, it's about understanding the intricate dance between legality and ethics in this digital playground. So if you found this journey insightful, hit that like button, subscribe for more content adventures, and share your thoughts in the comments below. Your support fuels the creativity train and together, We'll keep making content that not only shines but also uplifts. Until next time, happy creating and let the digital adventures continue.